Hello, and welcome to Nextara TV's Windows 7 Basic Operation Series. My name is Joe, and I will be guiding you through the basic operations of your Windows 7 machine. Windows 7 is the latest operating system from Microsoft, and is hands down one of the best products they have ever released. Its simplified controls allow users to work and navigate their computers easier than ever. Today, we are going to go through the basics of your Windows 7 desktop. After today's lesson, you should be able to navigate the basic functions of your desktop and know how to use the start menu, your desktop icons, the quick launch toolbar, and the notification area. If you're familiar with previous versions of Windows, you'll notice that the start menu does not look like the green start menu that you're used to. Instead, the little green square has been replaced by this blue dot with the Windows logo inside. When you open the Start menu, you'll notice the list of programs on the left side. Separated by this gray line are your pinned programs and your recent programs. Recent programs are just a list of any program you've opened recently. A pinned program is one that will always remain at the top here regardless of when the last time you opened it. Now that allows for quick searching and access of the program. To pin a program to the Start menu, you can take one from the Recent menu and just drag it above this gray line, or you can go into your Program list, find a program, right-click it, and say Pin to Start menu. Now your program is in the Start menu and will always remain there regardless of when the last time you opened it. One of the biggest things in Windows 7 is the search bar. Now the search bar functions as a program or file search and also works the same as the run command that you're used to. On the right hand side you'll see many user specific buttons. Now what I mean by user specific are these files are all associated with your user profile. Should you log in as a different user you will have a completely different set of these files and folders. By clicking on my name at the top it opens up my General Documents folder and it has links to all of the different folders that are related to my profile. This Documents folder opens up the My Documents under my name. The same goes with Pictures and Music. Now if I click Computer, that opens up my File Manager and a list of my drives as well as my Optical Drive. Depending on your setup of computer you may have different devices listed but generally your programs will all be under the C drive. The control panel is basically the brains of your Windows system. It's where you can control all of the administrative operations of your computer. Now we won't get into this today but it's a very important thing to know. Next are your devices and printers. This is where you'll find a list of the attached devices on your computer as well as all of the installed printers. Now let's move off the start menu and onto the taskbar. The taskbar is this blue bar at the bottom and it controls all of your open programs as well as giving you a few more options for opening those programs that you use the most in a quick and efficient manner. When you first get your computer you'll have three icons, your Internet Explorer, your Windows Explorer, and your Windows Media Player. Now these are available for you in the same way as the pinned programs just something that you can get to quickly and easily. You can add programs to the taskbar by right clicking and saying pin to taskbar. You can do that in your programs list as well with any programs you see in there. You probably won't have this one unless you really like to do web tutorial videos. Down here in the bottom right is your notification area. Now if you've used Windows before you may have seen that notification area get extremely cluttered with dozens of icons. Windows 7 only keeps these three by default. Your speaker volume, your internet connection, and what is known as your Windows notification. If you have any problems with your Windows system, this notification area will let you know. Among the standard Windows icons in the notification area are secondary programs that you may be running. Now these icons are accessible by using this little arrow. The nice thing about it is that that arrow will allow you to see other icons, but your screen will not get cluttered up. 
To the right of the notification area are your date and time settings. If you click on it, you can change the date, look at a calendar, or change your time zone and your date and time settings. You can even add secondary and tertiary clocks to your list. On the far right is the Show Desktop button. Now this used to be on Windows XP machines over on the left in the form of a palette. What this can do now is if you take any open window and click Show Desktop, it shrinks them all back down so that you can see your desktop in a blank slate. This concludes Episode 1 of the Windows 7 Basic Operation Series. After this lesson, you should know how to navigate the Start menu, your taskbar, the notification area, and your desktop. Tune in next week and we'll continue with Part 2 of our Windows 7 Basic Operation Series. Thank you.